We'll talk briefly about a two-tailed one-sample hypothesis test. Now, um, let's just start with what this means. So consider the data set of test scores for a random sample of standardized test takers. So here are the different scores that um, they get. And we want to test the hypothesis that the true population average average test score on this is not 15. So in other words, maybe in the, pre in the past we thought the average was 15 on this test, but now we feel like we may not be confident. Maybe something's changed, maybe um, there are new uh, school policies in place that maybe are improving or changing these scores. So we're going to test this. So our competing hypotheses are H not mu is equal to 15 versus H alternative mu is not equal to 15. Now we don't have a direction on this. This is not a directional test. We just want to see if it's any different. So we will gladly um, reject the null hypothesis if it's greater than or if it's less than. We just want to see if it's changed. Um, so our decision criteria, our second step is to, um, first of all, our assumed distribution has center mu equals 15. So we assume that the null hypothesis is true, and then we'll see if we have evidence to disprove that. So. Um, we will say that our decision is if the probability of our sample mean being less than or equal to the one we observe is smaller than 0.025, or if the probability of our sample mean being greater than or equal to the one we observe is less than 0.025, um, is less than 0.025, we will accept that the average test score is not 15 based on our sample data. So now we have to be thinking about, okay, so let's just say our distribution looks like this. Uh, it's always approximately normal and it's centered at mu equals 15. Since we're doing a non-directional test, that means that if, if our alpha is equal to 0.05, then that will mean that um, we're going to split the tails to be 0.025 each. So it's possible that whatever x bar we observe, because we never know in advance, if we don't know what direction we expect things to uh, persevere in, at first, we don't know if at the x bar sh we should expect to be higher than 15 or lower. We're going to do a non-directional test. So if our x bar that we observe is out here in this tail, if it's a lot bigger than 15, or if it's a lot smaller than 15, in that case, we'll conclude that it's significantly different. Now, notice the consequence of doing this. We have to split the probability between the two tails since we have no idea which direction it's going to go. So our calculations will require us to come back to our spreadsheet and so here is that data already entered in. Now our sample size is 13, so I have 1,000 people tossing a 13-sided die th uh, 13 times each, and I'm going to generate the random sample. And so now I will just go ahead and uh, build the distri sampling distribution of x bars, and, and there it is. But keep in mind that we have one little problem, and that problem is that the mean of this distribution is 10.24. Because the average of this current data, of that data right there, is 10.3. So I, I need my distribution to be centered at the theoretical mu equals 15. So we have x bar is equal to 10.3. So we've, we basically have to have to adjust these by taking the difference between, or how far away each point is from the sample mean, and add it to the theoretical mu so that we recenter this guy at mu equals 15. So here I have that calculated and you can see that here is the original data its center is at 10.3 and when I take the each of the x's minus the x bar I get the deviation between the point and the mean and then if I add it to 15 I get that deviation attached to my new mean and look at that the average of those values is exactly 15. So that's what I'm gonna use because that's my assumed distribution and I'm going to paste the values so that I don't mess with the formulas. Notice that the mean is 15. I generate my random sampling distribution. And now it's centered at 15. So now I want to know what's the probability of getting um, x is either, well, let's see. First of all, I now see that this value is, is smaller than the mean. It's uh, My original sample mean was, 11, what do we say, 10.3. So the probability of getting something uh, 10.3 or smaller um, is nearly 0%. So my, my value is way out here in the tail. It's way, way, way out here. My x bar equals 10.3 um, is way out here in this tail, which means that since it's less than 0.025 uh, probability likely, that means that this is an extreme outlier and I should conclude that the tests have changed.